welcome everybody to our the fifth in our series of webinars on certification uh, brought to you by World Chefs in partnership with City and Guild. Um, I am joined today again by our colleague Dora Teamer. Dora is the Senior Manager for Recognitions and Frameworks at City and Guilds and Dora will be, will be uh, contributing to the webinar along with myself. So um, we want to thank you, first of all, for um, registering of such great numbers. Absolutely fantastic. And I see the numbers are still climbing. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll take it nice and slowly. So just to say, just before we start some housekeeping, uh, Lynn will be conducting our polls. Uh, we'll be doing the first poll right after this, this little slide here. And then Olivia will be monitoring our media platforms and uh, keeping an eye on what's happening there. And then after that, then we will this 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 webinar today is about the World Chefs Certified Pastry Chef. So if you have any questions, um, you know, please pop them into the Q and A because midway through the presentation, we will be doing a, a reflection, and we can we can be able to answer those questions at that stage. So uh, look, without further ado, we will just uh, start. So. Um, so this is all about uh, the World Chefs Pastry Chef, Certified Pastry Chef. So it's about showcasing your pastry and basing, bake, baking expertise skills. So I'm going to ask Dora just to kind of give a brief overview of this uh, slide here. Dora. Thank you, John. And again, good uh, evening, afternoon, morning, everyone for joining. It's, it's great to see everyone in such large numbers and hopefully you are all keeping safe. Um, what you can see on the screen is, is a visual illustration of, of the global framework that WordChefs has created in partnership with City and Guilds. And the framework is, is designed to do one simple thing, which is really recognize the skills and experience of those working in the culinary and hospitality professions. On the uh, left hand side, you can see the blue badges. They are all the culinary badges. So they are the original part of the framework, if you wish. So they are the World Chefs uh, certified certification levels, starting with Commis Chef uh, and then progressing all the way through to Master Chef, Master Pastry Chef and Culinary Educators. It does, of course, include today's topic, which is the Pastry Chef. And that's the badge that you can see circled in a uh, blue shape. Um, because the culinary side was so successful um, just before the pandemic uh, at the request of employers and, and professionals around the world, we expanded the framework to cover the rest of the hospitality industry as well. So now we are able to certify the skills and experience of those working not just in a professional kitchen, but also working in a food and beverage service, front of house and housekeeping. But again, today is very much around the pastry chef. And uh, over the next couple of minutes, uh, John and I will take you through the design of the badges, what are the requirements for you to, um, to get certified, and some of the key steps which are involved in, uh, in the application process that can get you to a point where you can claim and excitingly share your badge. Hmm. Okay. So, um... This one here is the slide that I will look at. Okay, so this is actually, uh, let's, you know, we like to put this in as a closer look so you can actually see what the actual badge is about. So the holder of this badge is a professional pastry chef or baker who has a specialist knowledge and expertise in producing bakery and pastry, baking and dessert products. The individual would have a proven track record in managing a pastry section, whether it be in a hotel or whether it be a bakery or whatever, which includes developing people, budgeting and forecasting, and contributing to the implementation of the kitchen revenue plan. Um, so they are either employed as a pastry chef or equivalent, or they run their own business. So they're, they're, the, they're the options that are there. So the route to certification. So if we look at these here, there are, there are five steps. And the first step here is um, you're choosing your badge. So to do that, you need to go to our website and look at the badge that you're, you're, you're thinking of applying for. It's very important that you read the certification requirements. These are really, really important points that we're, and we'll be re-emphasizing these as we go along. You must make sure that the certification level chosen matches your skills and experience. 
it is also important for you to note that you must be currently working at that level that you're applying for. So if you're applying for a pastry chef, you're working as a pastry chef, currently employed. Step two is where you apply online. So you're paying the application fee. You will then receive access to your online account, which is Learning Assistant, which we'll talk about later on. Step three is where you will submit your application. And as part of this, you prepare and upload your evidence. Your application is then assessed. You will then be notified if further information is required. And again, we'll talk about this as we go along. Step four then is where you receive your badge. You will be issued with your badge, with a digital badge, if you only and if your application is successful. So it's a very important to, to, to explain that. You know, it is not a, it, it is simply a, is not simply a case of you know uh, providing evidence and then saying that's it, I've submitted it and that's it. It has to go through all these steps. It's very very important because it's not just an automatic claim for a badge. It doesn't work like that. And then step five, that's where you can share your badge, so you can claim and start using a new badge. And again, we'll talk about that as we go along and the benefits of it. John, before, sorry to interrupt, before you start with this um, slide, would you like me to launch the first poll so we can get to know our audience Lynn, Lynn, and that's, tell Lynn, that's, exactly? Lynn, that's why you're my superstar and I keep forgetting about this and thank you. Sorry for, yeah, you're yeah, very good. Thank you. Yes, uh, so yeah, just, just want to say hi to everyone and uh, also as John introduced in the beginning of the session, uh, or also in the previous slide, this webinar is designed for pastry chef. That's why we would like to know um, more about you, whether you are currently working as a pastry chef. So if you are using the Zoom client and uh, the Zoom uh, application on your device, please uh, let us know whether you are currently working as a pastry chef. Thank you. If we can do that now, that'd be great. Yes, yeah. um, and John, in the meantime, I think you can still continue with, with the presentations yeah. and okay. we can share the result after. Great, thanks, Lynn. So uh, again, looking at the, uh, the, the, the closer look, entry requirements and evidence types. And uh, Dora, you can chip in here at, at any point if you wish. So the entry requirements, uh, obviously qualifying certification, um, well, I, I'm not sure if that's relevant in this case, or is it? In the... No, I think that's that, that's why it's in light blue. That it, it it's relevant to some of the levels, yes. but not yeah. to this level. Yes. I think though. I think though. And here's the point that I think where it will be re relevant, and it's an interesting point. Is that if somebody if somebody already has an equivalent certification, like someone from from the American Culinary Federation, well then that's where that comes in because they already qualify. But they already would provide a qualifying certification for a fast track. Yes, and I think it also it could also say qualifying work experience in a way yes. because yeah. what is important and as you already highlighted, John, that the pastry chef level this certification does require a, a level of work experience and absolutely. and that as you will highlight is is clearly laid out in the handbook yeah. as well. Totally, absolutely, yeah. And then so that's moving on. So that's the employment status, and then the next one then is witness testimony. This is very very important because you know. Uh, and this again forms, it's a very strong arm of our quality assurance behind the, 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 the actual certification and the badging system. So witness must confirm the applicant has consistently demonstrated the skills and competencies required for the, for the, for the role that they, they have, they're in. And, you know, if it's a case that, that the, the pastry chef, they happen to own their own business, well then they must complete what's called a declaration of business ownership if applicable. That's a separate form altogether, which again, we will be going through later on during the presentation. Uh, written tasks, obviously then you'll be, you'll be, you'll be asked to uh, give information on, you know, culinary stroke pastry knowledge and skills, all to do with your job and so on and so forth. Your experience of working as an executive pastry chef or equivalent, a pastry chef, or indeed whether you're running your own business. So again, we'll go through all that later on. Uh, the, the badge components, which Dora will talk about shortly, these are the three components. So core skills, role specific skills, and professional development. These are really, this, the, 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 you know, the actual, the testimony, if you like, of the evidence is really based around all of these three, three very, very important part, uh, pieces of evidence. And then obviously then documentary evidence, you know, you would have to include, say, recipes, menus, reviews of any type, you know, uh, whether they be peer reviews, 
uh, reviews from magazines or whatever, uh, competition awards, etc. You know, um, obviously then you have to provide um, a food safety uh, certification and then professional titles and certifications achieved that you may have achieved over time. They can also be, they can also be submitted in support. So Dora, do you want to talk about the handbook? Yeah, sure. So as, as we showed on the very first slide, which was really the um, snapshot of the website, uh, but you will have uh, when you receive a copy of the uh, presentation, the link as well. And the link is simple to remember. It's, it's worldchefs.org slash global certification. So on that page, you will be able to find the handbook for every badge, including the pastry chef badge. And that handbook is critical because it lays out all the skills and, and experience that one would need to have to stand a chance of getting certified. Alongside this document on the main website, you will also find an introductory handbook. And the introductory handbook will give you an overview of the, um, an introduction to the certification. So it will tell you the process you'll go through, the type of evidence that will be required. So we are asking everyone who's interested to look at the introductory handbook, to look at the pastry chef or any other handbooks that they would like to apply for. And then, as you said, John, then they can go through the document and the three key sections in yeah. the document, which I believe we have got on the next slide, don't yeah. we? Yeah. So again, as John, would you like to talk to this slide or would you like me go to? Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, so the, the three key sections and John has already highlighted would include, on the one hand, we'll be looking for evidence of the transferable skills. So they will be in the core skills section. And they will be the type of skills that are not just specific to the culinary profession. They would be things like planning, managing a team or section, working with others, communication, problem solving. So all the things that would transfer across any industries. The second part of the requirement includes the raw specific requirements. So this is when we are looking at uh, the pastry and, and baking expertise. And the third one will be evidence of the ongoing learning and training that an applicant has undertaken to make sure that their knowledge remains, their understanding of the profession uh, uh, remains up to date. Yeah, that's relevant and up to date, yeah, absolutely. And then this is really just a, an example and the first page of the, the handbook, which shows how the core skills are laid out. So you will see that C, which stands for course. So they C1, core skill one, C2 core skills too. And the top uh, or the main skill or competency requirement is, is shown in black, uh, uh, black print. And then you will see examples, almost like practical examples from the workplace, what it looks like in real life. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to the next one, John, then we will have again examples of how the raw specific skills are, are, are displayed in the handbook. And once again, just to highlight and, and to reiterate the point that we would expect that somebody is able to meet all of these requirements in order for them to, to be able to get certified. So if when you go through the handbook, if you find that you can evidence some, but not all of them, then you might need a little bit more time or you might need to do some extra learning or extra experience. Otherwise, your application will not be successful. Mm. And then the final one is the, the third element, the third section in the handbook, which is around the professional development, um, which as we mentioned is around training, learning, and an overall understanding of how pastry chefs can progress within the industry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then this here is, um, this really is about sort of how you share your badge. So once you've obviously been successful and you've, you've, your badge has been awarded. So the badge can be shared on social media. And, you know, it is a great, it's definitely a great tool to be able to build and showcase your career pathway and show obviously continuous professional development. And I think, you know, we were discussing this last week or on another webinar and it's about, you know, future proofing your skills. This has never, there's never been a better opportunity than, to, than the current climate, you know, for chefs to be able to go and, you know, if they have the time, you know, to concentrate on, you know, uh, building their building their career, uh, helping to enhance their career. Sorry, uh, by 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 looking at the certification because you know, if and when hopefully everything will come back to normal again, you know, um, it'll be a case of employers, I'm sure, looking at people who are who have gone to the bother of maybe you know you know 
participating or purchasing a certification and saying, look, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm upskilling, I'm, I'm updating my skills, you know, would you agree? I would, and, and John, it might be worth also sharing with the audience that because of the pandemic, they do recognise that access to the workplace might have been restricted. Um, some hotel shops, retail outlets needed to go into uh, full lockdown. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. we have made a temporary provision within the certification mm -hmm. that uh, if you are in employment or you run your business, but you can't access the workplace, yeah. then there is a special uh, mini guidance available as to what you need to provide. So instead of necessarily, for example, taking a photo in your workplace, which is one of the requirements, you would be able to do that uh, in your home as well, as long as you've got the right equipment, mm -hmm. but you would still need to make contact with the person who will provide your witness testimony, which will be your line manager. And again, yeah. we'll explain that later. Or if it's your own business, then of course you would complete the ownership declaration. Totally, yeah, yeah. And th this here, just an example of, 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 of one chef, Michael Volk. Michael kindly agreed to uh, allow us to share his, um, his uh, recently awarded in December of last year where he was awarded the Serpa Pastry Chef. And, um, and this is another, another person here, uh, Maya, Maya Sirani, from, Maya's from India. And uh, she has also been awarded with the Serpa Pastry Chef. So, um, you know, uh, the certification, and it is truly global, there's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, it is truly global because it's reaching, it's reaching all corners of the world, isn't it really, you know? Um, okay, we've come to the Q&A section, so, um, Let's have a look and see if there are... And John, ideas. maybe just to say that, of course, we are, just when we look at the immediate questions, and I can see one having been posted, we will then show you the system. So, you know, just, uh, yeah. uh, we haven't come to the end of the webinar. We just like to no, pause no. for some initial yeah, yeah, questions yeah. before we go any further. Yeah, now for some reason, or I'm having the same problem. John, you are having... Time. So let me tell you, the, 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 the there were a couple of questions which have been answered as we were talking, but this one is... Uh, I am a patissier in a pastry chocolate shop in France and mm -hmm. do not work in a hotel. Uh, which level should I apply for? So I think it could be the right level. This but... is the right level, the pastry chef, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But as we said, the key is really for the person uh, who has the question to, to look at uh, yeah. the uh, ISEC, to, to look at the handbook and make sure that when you go through the handbook, you are able to evidence all the skills yeah. which and are being asked for. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, no, very true, yeah. yeah. John, yeah. I suggest that we carry on. Let's let's show the audience the system because yeah, I think, you know, it will probably answer some of the questions, but yeah. also trigger maybe a I few agree. other questions. And then we can also make the point as well that, you know, we have a, 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 a very good um, FAQ list of questions, so they might be able to find some of the answers there. But yeah, OK, Dora, I'll let you answer this one. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, 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 it yet again, it shows us the, uh, the main website, um, which uh, www.worldchefs.org slash global certification. Once you have selected uh, the badge of your choice, and again, today, uh, most of the audience will probably be looking at the pastry chef badge, then you will be asked to uh, pay the application fee. You will then receive an automated email um, with your login details. And then the login details will allow you to uh, log into the, uh, the e-assessment platform. So that will be the platform that you will use to upload your evidence. The email will include information around um, the first login details, and then you will be able to take a note of the username that will be your ID as you go through the process. Then the next uh, slide that's shown on the screen uh, shows you the, um, what the platform looks like once you've logged in. This particular example is, is for the chef de cuisine, but it doesn't really matter. The main point is that you will have one black bar in the middle and we just would like you to make sure and then double check that this displays the level that you have applied for. Then before you make a start, uh, please go to the resources section and there you will be able to uh, download the guide to using the platform. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really important. And John, we say it every time in every webinar yeah. that if applicants look at this guidance, then they make their life so much easier because all the key things that they need to know including a step-by-step -step guidance as to how you need to complete the application are all included. So our please, for your interest, but also to make sure that you can be successful, please don't skip that step because otherwise it can be 
a little bit difficult to navigate the system because you yeah. don't know what to look for and where. Absolutely. And the fact is that it's look, for a lot of people, it's it's a new system. It's the first time they're seeing it. But I also think as well that we have two really very good video resources there as well, which are which are excellent. And, and as you said, or it's well worth it's well worth the while actually just playing these and looking at them and take, you know, just just follow the steps because it's as you say, it's a you know, it's it's worth doing it because it just it definitely will help as, as, you, as you progress along. And also, John, before we move on, just just to note that in the resources section, even if um, applicants are coming through the fast track route, you know, there is a uh, mm. there is a specific guidance for those who would have been certified by the American Culinary Federation. Yeah, yeah. And what we mentioned earlier, which is the temporary measures in place for those who have been impacted by the pandemic in oh, terms yeah. of being yeah. able to access the workplace or they might have lost their job. There's mm. a mini guidance available so that they know what they need yeah. to do. Yeah, it's very good. And then this one is, is, of course, the next important step, which is outlined in the guidance document that we mentioned, uh, which is about accepting a, a declaration. So this is the, the, the declaration from the person who's applying. It's called learner declaration. Uh, and this is the evidence to say that the person is the person who's accessing the account is the applicant and they will be using evidence produced by them. So it's, it's, it's again, it's your own testimony to the process because there will be a number of quality checks undertaken. Yeah. And I think I, I think it's also worth pointing out and note, noting that, and you know, we're, well, and we have had instances in the past where some people may be registering or maybe applying for certification are not aware that they have to provide, you know, that they have to provide the evidence using this online platform. But, you know, it, it's important that they understand that that is the only way that evidence can be, can be accepted and, and assessed. Absolutely. And John, also to say that if somebody doesn't accept this declaration, then their evidence will not be assessed. It won't so, be assessed. Absolutely. Yeah, so no. the assessment process requires that this acceptance yeah. uh, has been confirmed. Yeah. Okay. Next one up. And yes. the next one is just two examples, isn't it, John? You know, one is you mentioned that there would be a number of written tasks uh, mm -hmm. and they are written because the answer will be provided in an online um, uh, form. Yeah. But all the questions will be related to chefs, in this case, pastry chefs working. So, you know, they are very practical questions. Mm -hmm. They will be looking for evidence in different scenarios. So it will help us build a holistic picture of the applicant's skills and experience. Um, and another type of uh, task which will be part of the application is when they will be asked to upload documentation or photos. Uh, it might be um, uh, recipes, it could be photos of the dessert products and dishes prepared, or it might be copies of, for example, health and safety certificate. Yeah. So, and, and I think I said this before, and did, I did said it in some of the earlier uh, webinars, that, you know, I, I I kind of relate this this process, if you like, to building a dish. You know, like it's like, you know, you have to gather all your mise en place. So for this, you need to gather the evidence beforehand and make sure that you have it to hand. And, and the best way to do that would be to, if possible at all, to create a folder on their, on their desktop and put all the information that they think they're going to need in there, you know, and then, but, and then, so that's it, you have ease of access. But the other thing about this system is, and which I really love, is that, you know, everything that you put in there, it's saved. You know, you don't have to worry about losing it or anything like that. You can come to it, you can, you can, you know, you can, you can look at, you can get up in the middle of the night if you want and, and do some work on it if you want, there's no problem. And it can be, you can access, access it from anywhere in the world, anywhere. And John, that's another good point that it, it's not an application which is time bound in a sense. You don't have to do it in one sitting. Mm. You can actually log in. You can look through all the tasks. You can yeah. take your time. You can yeah. put in a piece of evidence. And in fact, I think it would be almost impossible for somebody to do it in one go because yeah. it will require you to prepare some dishes. So you need to think of, you know, you yeah. need to go away, think about it and come back with the actual evidence. Yeah. And the beauty about it is that it gives, it gives, it gives the applicant an opportunity to actually go back in and review you know, the evidence that they have, if they want to make changes to it, they can do all that, you know, because, and everything's recorded. Everything that they've done, every action that they've made, they've made is all recorded. So it's all there, you know. And uh, then as we... One, one mm -hmm. point I would say, sorry, Dora, is that, you know, please don't use an iPhone to, to do this application. You must use a laptop or you must use a, a, a computer. It won't work on an iPhone. It does. I think it's just difficult to, it's, it's, it's more difficult, difficult to manage. It's, it's, um, it's from a user experience point of view, it's just easier to see the screen on a, on a slightly larger screen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, if we were to 
go to the next one. So we talked about the witness testimony and, and the declaration of business ownership. Again, don't worry if you can't, of course, read the document now on the screen, it will be part of the application. The point to remember is that if you are employed, so if you have got a manager, so you, are, you don't own your business, then you will be asked to uh, ask your line manager to complete a witness testimony form. So that will really confirm the type of activities that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and your skills and experience. And we will also be asking your witness. In fact, there are two witnesses. One will be your line manager. One will be a person connected to the organization. It might be a, a HR person. It might be a, a director or general manager. Mm -hmm. And those details will be submitted to City and Guilds in the platform because we are the certifying organization. And then we'll be doing some background checks just to make sure that the form has been completed by the person yeah. Yeah. who's the witness. Now, if somebody does own their business, so they run their own business, then they don't need to complete the witness testimony. They would need to complete the um, declaration of business ownership, which yeah. serves a very similar purpose. But of course, in that case, they wouldn't have a, a boss, so to speak, a manager, because they run their own business. And then they would be doing a, a, a self-declaration, but also they would provide information on the business, which we can yeah. double check. And at the, at the point as well, which I think is important, or that the applicants must indicate, you know, they must tick the check boxes to say whether it's a whether it's witness testimony or whether it's declaration of business ownership. They must tick those boxes. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. Move on. To Excellent. The next Moving on, and then so this okay. one is really just uh, another view of the platform. So this is now mm -hmm. an example where somebody would have completed all the tasks uh, and once they complete the task then the tasks turn light blue mm -hmm. and then they also have to submit the task because yet again people can come into the system as many times as they would like so it's their choice how quickly or slowly they do it but they need to then go back into every task and say I am now submitting this task so those little tiles the black tiles on the screen are the tasks and once they have said, I am submitting this task and that task, the task turns into a darker blue, which yeah. is what we can see on the right hand side of the, the screen. Right side, yeah. Yeah. And that's when we can see on this case, uh, the all the tasks have been completed, but there mm. will be one final step that they will need to make, which again is going to be in the guide that's available in the resources. And John, I believe that's on the next slide, isn't it? Yeah, but just before we go to that slide, just to, uh, again, again in the resource, and I can't emphasize this enough. I mean, there's a lot of work going into this from, from, from your team and yourself. Like, like if I look at the last one here, the video too, you know, uh, creating and uploading and submitting the evidence. That's a really, really helpful video. It's a very yes. good video guide. And that, again, speaks to what you've just been talking about, you know, about, about submitting their evidence and making sure that they do that. John, maybe you could just move your cursor just once again over the resources section so we can highlight that's right so where you can see those white bars yeah this is where good. in the that's where the resource section is and again it's all explained in the guidance yeah. documents yeah. okay and then this is the final step a really really important step so once you have submitted all of your evidence and you are happy you can then, and you need to go into the contact diary, which is that little black tab. Um, and again, John, maybe you could just move your cursor that, that there. So you've got three white tabs and one black one. This is where you can create a contact diary entry. And all you need to put there is to say first or original submission completed. Mm -hmm. That is really the applicant declaration and confirmation that I have now done everything I needed to do. I'm happy, please start assessing my application. Yeah. If this okay. step is not completed and many people uh, make that mistake, then the assessment doesn't start. No. So it's really, no. really important that it gets it completed. Start, yeah. okay. so. And this is an example where there might have been an additional question. Another point to, to note, John, is that every applicant will have two opportunities to submit evidence. Hmm. So the first opportunity, which is the first submission, is when they go into the system, they prepare everything, and they get to the point that we showed on the previous slide. Hmm. If there are no questions, then the whole application will turn green. And once it has been verified, then the badge would be issued. Yeah. Many times, you know, there might be a small thing missing or the assessor might need some clarification. In that case, they will come back to the person and that's when they will see this mustard color, this yellow mustard color. Yeah. That means that if any of the little tiles, uh, the task are shown in that color, 
that means that the assessor had a question or a query on the evidence that they submitted. Yeah. And we can see an example of that on the right hand side, where the first main part of the application turned green. So yeah. that's all done. But then in the second of the four parts, there was a question. So they just need to click on that tile. They need to look at the question. And as explained in the guidance, they just need to provide the additional information. Yeah. And it's also important to note as well that they can monitor their progress so they can see it on top here, like it's 80% accepted, 12% returns. So this is all, it's all there for them for them to see. And the other thing as well, that they get, they'll get a message from learning assistant, don't they? They get them. Um... Absolutely. So an, another one that uh, in the guidance document, which as we suggested, you should really read before you make application. Yeah. It takes you through uh, the avatar setting. So that's something you can see in the, um, in the top, left-hand corner of the screen, there you have got settings for the email address mm -hmm. and also how frequently you would like to receive notifications. Yeah, yeah. So you can see, I would like to have it every time the assessor comes to me, or I would like to have it just once a day when the assessor comes back to me. So all those settings are outlined. Yeah, yeah. But excitingly, the example that we've got on the screen is when somebody has been successful. So the whole application will turn green. And depending on sampling, some of those will also turn pink. So that means that there has been the dual quality assurance applied. And in the contact diary, their badge will appear as soon as it has been issued. Yeah. Simultaneously, an email will be sent to the same email address, which is recorded within this account. That's another reason why it's really important that they double check their avatar settings, because that will be the email address used to issue the badge. And yeah. Once they receive an email, they will then have instructions to uh, click on the uh, accept my badge link, and then they will be able to open an account, which is a free account. If they already have one, they can just log in and they can then claim and they can start showcasing mm. their badge. The badge, yeah. Okay. And that's actually the example that I just that's mentioned. So, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the email would be sent by City and Guilds because we are the certifying partner oh, yeah. to World Chefs. Yeah. And then on the um, right hand side, John, that's really the example, isn't it? Or what the yeah. badge looks like in real yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. And then they have this here. Yeah. And that's the larger version. That's so, the, that's yeah. The longer version, yeah. And then also, then we also have this, uh, this additional. Um, um, what would we call it, additional service where it's a PDF certificate so they can, it's a downloadable statement of achievement for all your badge. So for every, for every, every badge that's issued, uh, each, each candidate will receive this, this, um, this certificate. So it can either be saved on your desktop or you can save it as, a, it, is, it is a PDF if you, wish to, if you choose to print it and display it, which is what a lot of chefs want to do, which I think is great. And um, so, yeah, they can actually do that as well. So there's no... There's and no... also, John, we found that uh, many individuals might need to submit a copy of the PDF, for example, yeah. as part of an application or, or yeah. other type of certification. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think, I think these are key points to remember, aren't they really? Um, you know, uh, read both handbooks before you make a payment. That's really the important thing to do. Um, secondly, then read the instructions before starting your application. Again, as, as Dora has emphasized, and I've emphasized myself, you know, the two handbooks, just take your time to, to read them. Don't rush into this, you know, take your time because you want to do it right. And as we've already said, you have two submissions in total. So when your first submission, if your first submission hasn't been successful, you know, if there's something missing, well, then you, you, you obviously get a second chance. And then hopefully you'll, you'll be successful in the second one. Uh, only submit your first application once you've completed and submitted all of the individual tasks. We can't say it, we can't emphasize it enough. That is really, really important. This is a really important step that you must take. So, you know, just take your time when you're, when you're doing this. Uh, make sure that you've accepted the candidate declaration before you make your first submission. Again, a very important step. And then last, make sure you've made a contact diary entry when your first submission is ready to be assessed. And, you know, if you can, if you follow all them steps, well, then, you know, you're, 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 um, you're on the way to successfully attaining uh, a World Chef's Global Certification Badge. So, um, 
John, should Please. we look at some questions? Yes, sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I know you can't see them, so maybe if you still can't see them, I can just uh, take no, them maybe one by one. And... Unfortunately, I'm not. No, you go ahead. Um, so the first one, John, is, is, is there any time limit or specific dates for an application? No, no, absolutely not. No, I mean, people can, people can, uh, people can apply any time they want. Now, you know, I think, it, and I think I'd agree with this story, I think it would be reasonable that we would reasonably expect people to, you know, uh, let's, for argument's sake, if somebody comes along and they, they, they want to, they put their application in within, say, six weeks or whatever, well, then, then we have a certain time on our side that we will review and we will respond to that application, you know, with, with the assessment feedback. But I think from the point of view of the assessor, you know, at this currently, we don't have an actual cutoff point. John, I think you meant the applicant from the point of view of the applicant, not the assessor. I think you meant to say. I, I, I meant, sorry, I meant, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. I meant the applicant. Sorry, my fault. My fault. My apologies. Sorry. Um, so I'm, I, I am right on that. Yeah, you are. And I think the yeah. assessors do have a timeline. You know, they, well, they do, do respond. Well, yeah, sorry. The timeline, yeah, but the timeline is for them. The timeline for the assessors is that they have to have it. Once everything has been completed and submitted, well, then they obviously have a timeline that they have to work within so that they can provide feedback to the, to the, to the candidate. Yeah, absolutely. It's five yeah. working days, just to clarify. Five working so days. Five right. working yeah, exactly. days, that's yeah, right, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, but as you say, John, and what yeah. happens that if there's somebody who um, who might not have done anything in the account, so there has yes. been absolutely no activity, no login for about six months, mm. then the, applic then the um, application goes into a paused stage. Yeah. And then it doesn't mean if you have paid, of course, you can come back to your application anytime, but mm. then your login details for security reasons will need to be re-triggered. Yeah. So again, we encourage people to try to complete as soon as they can. Typically, I think it takes about a month, but that's just because people take their time. We had applicants yeah. who completed within a week. Uh, but if there's no activity for six months, then there would need to be a security uh, uh, check to make yeah. sure that the person Absolutely. is still. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Then the next one, John, is, is an interesting one. It's, uh, it says that uh, Rajiv is saying that uh, uh, he's a commis chef at uh, Airways and uh, they have a limited menu around 35 products. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we produce, the, his job uh, specification is to produce pastry products as per the menu only. And his job description is a commis chef, not specific to pastry chef. Could he apply or could he not apply? It uh, feels to me that he's more. He should look at the commis chef. I, I was just going. To, yeah, I was just going to suggest the commis chef one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and, uh, uh, so, right, yep. Yeah, sorry, John. <laughs> no, I agree. With you. I, th I think it's. I think right. I think it's something we we. I I I agree. I think it should be the commis chef one because um, if he's working as a commis chef, well, then that's the level of employment that we we you know that matches the certification level that he's applying for. It's it, irrespective of whether he's working in pastry or whether he's working in lard or whatever whatever part of the kitchen they're in, you know. Um, because we don't actually have specifically, we don't have a specific commie chef pastry certification badge as yet. You know, that's right. That's right. Something, something we'll work on in the future. It's something. So we will be looking. Yeah. Yes, it's it, it's in the um, it's it's so, it's on the roadmap to have yeah. a a commie uh, a commie pastry. Yeah, um, but I, I would I will be suggesting to Rajiv to to look at the commie chef look at the commie chef badge. Commie chef one, and again, yeah. Rajiv, the commie chef handbook and the certification requirements are also fully accessible oh, yeah. on the website. So please have a look and feel free to apply. Yeah. Um, then we've got Portia from uh, RSA. And uh, the question is, I have a certificate with City and Guild in food preparation. Mm -hmm. um, but since I'm working in the hotel, most of the time we are required to bake. <laughs> so yeah. I want to start pastry as a professional. Which level should I take? So what, what, sorry, what, what so, is he working as a chef? Or is he working as a? Uh, it, it, I think she's working as a chef in a hotel. She's done the city and guilds food preparation, which I believe is the level two, the the um, level two diploma. But okay. then clearly that she's being asked to do a lot of baking. Um, I think the question for her would be to to see whether she would be able to evidence everything which is in the handbook, which mm -hmm. is very specific to pastry. To pastry um, yeah, yeah. And it also feels to me without, of course, knowing her background that when we have the commi, uh, you know, the commi pastry, which is a, uh, which is the, I guess, pastry equivalent of the commi chef, mm. that might be 
more relevant. But again, if she has got a lot of baking experience, she might be able to meet the requirements. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's a matter of it's a matter of background and it just checking really, the handbook. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah. But also to say, John, because I think it's relevant to this question and the next question, that if somebody applies for the commis chef or chef de party or any of the standard chef badges, they can still use pastry and 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 um, you know dessert product as one of the many oh, they can, uh, absolutely. dishes. Oh, so, yeah. you know, there will be a requirement even under the standard culinary badges to submit yeah. a range of dishes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. one of those could, could be a dessert. Could so it's dessert, worth yeah. looking absolutely. at it. Yeah, yeah. Then the next one is from Mahmoud um, from Pakistan. Um, so he's working with a company which makes whipped cream for cakes and they conduct demonstration for different hotels, cafes and bakeries. Mm -hmm. and they also conduct baking workshops so his question is which uh, certification level should i apply for well, it sounds like he's um sounds like he's a demonstrator but i don't know i mean I'm, i mean we don't know not knowing his background does he have does he have bakery and pastry skills you know is that his background is that you know it doesn't really say so again i think it doesn't say I think he would need to look at, wouldn't he? Um, he'd have the, to look at. He'd have to look at the pastry chef. He'd have to look at the pastry chef requirements, really, like you know, and 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 see see if he see if he matches those. Exactly. I mean, it, it because again, if he works for that company and and mm. as well as producing the whipped cream, he actually has got pastry qualification and he's able to work as a pastry chef. And the whipped cream That's, is used as a as an ingredient yeah. that could be different. But yeah, it yeah, feels absolutely. like. It feels like it might not be the, the, the right match. No. Then we've got Angel who's asking, uh, oh, the questions just jumped. I think the team is clearing them. So I need to just go back where I was. Okay. Um, which certificate uh, should I choose if I want to work at a hotel? Are there any books modules that I can study before the exam? I think it's uh, probably he, to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll let you go and I'll let you clarify. Well, I think it's just to clarify the point. And, and we started the webinar by saying that uh, the certification that we are talking about today is about recognizing the skills and experience yeah. that Absolutely. somebody has already got. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a training program. There yeah. are many excellent training programs out there. It's not a qualification as such. This is around looking at those who already have got the skills but they would like to get an up-to-date confirmation and recognition, a global recognition yeah. for the skills that they have. So if Angel is looking to become a pastry chef, then of course, you know, um, there are many, many, many good uh, pastry programs out there. World mm -hmm. Chefs has got over hundred partner schools, you know, who mm -hmm. offer a range of courses. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sure. John, it might be a good idea for her to look at the courses available. We've got uh, yeah. a great partnership with Hosco. You know, yeah. on the host school website, there Absolutely. are online courses. So, yeah. Angel, the best might be to look at World Chef's website, Hosco. If you've got City and Guild centers where you live, then again, they might also be running pastry programs. Where, where, where is she from? What I can't see. I can't okay, see okay. location, okay. so it's difficult to tell. But she can find all the information. Yeah, on yeah, the tell on the world. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. And the next one is I'm a head pastry chef in a two star Michelin restaurant and have experience as a head pastry chef for hotels with five seven outlets i need to take uh the question is do i need to take the pastry batch first before i can apply for the master pastry chef or yes. can i apply for the master pastry chef straight away no they'd have to do they have to do the certified pastry chef first yes absolutely yeah, but again um francian there's no time limit so you know we understand that you know uh, you might be actually qualified for the master pastry chef mm. so you could if you were able to complete the pastry chef um, within a few days or weeks you can apply for the master pastry chef straight away yeah. and we do see that happening John don't we quite often we do absolutely yeah we do um, yeah. especially I think we see quite a few people uh, because it's the same scenario for the master chef master chef yeah that they either need to have the world chef's executive uh, chef level mm. or they might have the ACF executive chef yes, level exactly, yeah. so they would then need to come forward and then they can step into the um, mm -hmm. the master chef level yeah totally yeah Right. Then the question from James, which is, how can chefs who lost their livelihoods during this time gain this certification? So, John, I think that's something we mentioned that, uh, James, we have got a, 
an interim arrangement in place, which oh, yeah. which is likely to 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 come to an end uh, over the coming month. But uh, if you have lost your job because of the pandemic, and you either own your own restaurant or or bakery shop uh, or or you know cafe, or you have got a line manager that you are still in contact with, you can apply, and then the line manager would just need to confirm the relationship that they. That's they are aware of your skills and experience. So there is a way in which we can accept applications just because of the situation that the pandemic has created. Mm-hmm. But there needs to be that evidence where you worked before you lost your job because yeah. of the uh, COVID-19. Yeah. The next one is from Isaac, John. Uh, what happens if you do not have a trainee under you? How can I complete this part of the handbook, lead and manage the pastry section to deliver production service standards. So the key there, John, would be the fact that it's a section. Yeah. And if yeah. it's a one person section, yeah. then there would be, I think it's just clarifying, John, that section doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a team. No, um, no it doesn't have to be. It can be a one man show. It could be, I mean, it's, show. you know, there are organizations, especially in the current time when they had to cut Absolutely. Uh, staff quite significantly. Yeah. So. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I said that the question or the answer there is that, you know, the leadership and, and the managing the section is because of the tasks which are involved in running the production yeah, effectively. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's easy, you know. Then John, the next one, how does fast track portion, well, it looks like if, how, how does the fast track portion of the application looks like if you have the CEPC from the American Culinary Federation? Oh yeah, but they're asking about the actual fast track application. Fast track application, so yeah. Yeah, fast track applications where they have to, they have to provide, they have to provide um, information for two two sets of two separate application forms, application one and application two. Very simple and very straightforward. The first thing they need to do is upload a copy of their current um, ACFCEC or uh, Certified Executive Pastry Chef certification. It must be in date. It has to be valid. Uh, and then obviously then the second the second application part is where they answer a series of questions. Very straightforward. And then just submit everything. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's all it's it, that can be um, that, that that can be done. It's just paid. It's paid as a fast track application. So they're not full. They're not having to complete the full application form. You only have to complete two sections. Exactly, because there is that arrangement with the American Already, Culinary yeah, Federation. Yeah, 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we do recognize that the great work that ACF is doing in the US. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely and amazing. and we, we do encourage and welcome yeah. applications yeah. from, from happy those. happy to partner with them. Happy to partner. Very, very happy to. Great. Absolutely. That they support us. Okay. There's again a question, John, which maybe I need to take because it's it's to say that uh, my school gave me a City and Guild certificate, uh, diploma, advanced diploma uh, in pastry. And... Uh, is there a difference between the City and Guild certificate and the global certification? Um, and I think the difference, John, would be that, you know, the City and Guild qualification is, is really the end result, the output from a training program. A program, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And of course, global certification is around experience work uh, gained in the workplace. So it's really yeah. a, a confirmation of the fact yeah. that somebody has worked in the industry. And current employment. So, so I would say it's really the progression, isn't it? You, yeah, you, you earn your qualification, you go and work in the industry, mm. and then the World Chef certification allows you to have that continuous confirmation. Yeah, totally, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then there's another question from Mohammed. Uh, may I ask, uh, how about someone who has plenty experience in the industry? Uh, so they, I think he's saying that they gained plenty of experience in the industry before. Now they work as a pastry lecturer in an education institution. Okay. Is is the person eligible to apply? The work is the working as a pastry lecturer in the in, in an institution. Well then, yeah. well then maybe they should be applying for culinary educator. I think so. Yes. You know, that's yes. what I suggest because um, if they're in, if that's if that's the if that's the work environment they're in, you know, they're it's in a, they're in education, that's irrespective right. of what 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 skill they're teaching. You know, whether pastry or hot kitchen or culinary art or whatever. Doesn't matter. I mean, if if it's education, which it sounds to me as it is, if, and if it's the main source of of employment, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, I mean, all the requirements are in the handbook. So, Mohammed, it's maybe yeah. just looking at the 
again the culinary educator one and see whether you are able yeah. to evidence um, exactly. absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah. then we've got Ponit asking what evidence uh, do we need to submit uh, a recipe or video of us preparing a particular product or any pictures of the product yeah well that's a part of their that's part of their evidence that they're asked to produce they're asked to they're asked to submit three separate dishes three separate um for pastry anyway three separate dishes uh, including re including the menus that, that these are dishes that maybe are featured off the menus they must also include the recipe and so on and so forth that's required to go with that as well and again, um, for everyone who's listening, there is an introductory handbook on the website. Yeah. It's only a 10 page document, but it does outline the yeah. type of things that you would need to you would yeah. need to be able to submit. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And the details in terms of what exactly you need to submit will then be available within the online portal. But yeah. we don't we are not requiring videos because we, we've done a lot of testing and we found that it's more practical, but it's also easier for individuals to, uh, you know, to prepare the dish and take photos of the dish, which includes close up of the dish. It um, includes yeah. the person holding the dish yeah, exactly. um, instead of them having to video and then the videos can become large and it takes long time for the assessors to view. There were sometimes issues with the quality. So again, requirements and the yeah. instructions are all in the, um, in the application. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, John, another question uh, from Isaac, uh, it's, uh, and I think, you know, he's looking through the handbook, which is fantastic, because, right. you know, he's doing what we would like him to do. And he's asking, uh, what if the owner is in charge of planning and managing resources? So, you know, the requirement from us is that it needs to be the person. But what if it's the owner who's doing it? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I mean, my thought would be that, uh, uh, of course, you know, the certification is about confirming what the person what, does. So yeah. what, what has worked in other establishments is that the person who was interested in applying, they had a conversation with their line managers or mm. with the owner, and they explained that they would like to expand their knowledge. They would like to be able to evidence those skills. So they use the certification to prepare as a, as a professional a, yeah. development yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that, that could be done, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that means that if Isaac is not doing it at the moment, mm. he couldn't meet all the requirements, yeah. but he could then set out a timeline and, and maybe in, you know, six months time. In time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Depending on how often he can do that task, he yeah. could then have a valid witness testimony from yeah. the owner. Good, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I'm also just checking whether, because I'm keeping an eye on time as well, John. I think yeah, well, we, we have, have got two, another poll, isn't it? That we have Lynn two more polls. To... So I think, if Lynn, do you want to step in and yes, let's absolutely. know the results? Of, what was the result of the first poll? Do we have that? Yes. Yes, I already have the result for the first poll with 100% of our participants voted on it. Okay. So just to share, oh, um, 53% of our audience members today are currently working as pastry chef That's and great. the remaining 47% of our mm. chefs here are not. Okay. So good. that's the first poll that we just conducted um, at great. the beginning of the webinar. Lovely. I'm going to stop sharing the result and we can start with the second poll. Great. So there are two questions that we would like to ask um, the audience. The first one is how likely are you to apply to be a workshop certified pastry chef after you have heard all the information and the benefits presented in this webinar. And uh, did you find the provided information in the webinar useful? Thank you for your answer. Hmm. So we wait for the wait for the response. And then yes. uh, while we're waiting, and we can sorry, Lynn, go ahead. Yes, I just want to highlight that we just received uh, one new question. So maybe we can take this time to oh, sure, yeah. address with open questions. Yeah, I can Absolutely, see. John. Can so the that? Stephanie uh, is asking, I'm from Mexico City and I am the head of the postgraduate and continuous education area in at Hospitality University. Uh, one of my passion is in the pastry area, but I only have some pastry diplomas from different establishments. Uh, I have made a lot of pastry, but I would like to have a valid certification. Would this program be eligible to me? 
Well, she's working as... as she's a, the head of the postgraduate and continuous education. So she's really, she's in education effectively. It feels to me, yes. You know, so... So again, I think that probably the point to share, John, with the audience that if somebody is, is wishing to get certified in, in, in the pastry profession, but they are not working as a pastry chef, mm. then other professional pastry programs, again, many of this yeah. might be a a yeah. better way for them to achieve that because the framework itself is very much an industry driven framework and it's about right. confirming competency in a job role. Yeah. Um, and there are many other certifications out there which are equally valuable, but they are designed to do something slightly different, which is around mm. showing that somebody has gone through a piece of learning. I'm sure there are many. I'm, I, and I don't know what, what country is she from? Did, did uh, Mexico City. I mean, there are, I'm sure there are very good schools there in Mexico that would, would offer some very you know, high end pastry programs if that's what she wanted to do. But she wanted she'd want to pursue them as a separate as a separate uh, thing. I mean, uh, you know, separate um, activity, if you like. But certainly from the point of view of the role she's currently at, the role she currently has is as an administrator. So effectively, she could apply for culinary educator. Absolutely. As a certification, yeah. And in the meantime, John, I'm also looking at the both the uh, FAQ and the uh, the chat. Um, there were a couple other questions around uh, whether it's a course uh, or certification. I think mm. you clarified that, but maybe just to to reiterate the point that uh, you know, please only purchase the certification if if you already have got yeah. the skills and experience, and you would like to have that certified. If you are looking for a course, then there are other resources available so look at the world chefs website their partners yeah. offer and also the host school website might be another really good place to um, to check yeah, yeah absolutely lots, lots of lots of great programs within all our partner schools fantastic yeah. of course and of course needless to say um city and guilds in in parts oh, of the yeah. world where we do have centers we, we also have got some fantastic qualifications mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. uh, lynn do we have the poor results because again i'm conscious of time we've got two more minutes left so it would be great to see what feedback we had from the audience yes so as of the moment uh 54 percent of our audience member have uh, already casted their vote so i would um, to be conscious of time, I'm going to end the poll here and share the results. Okay. So it, it's about 60%, yeah, 54% of the audience. So it's not necessarily full results, but let's see. Yeah. Drum, drum rolls. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's very good. You find the podcast information is very good. Yeah, yeah. useful. Excellent. So just to read out for those who, so we've got, uh, yeah. you know, almost, oh, that's wonderful, John. So with 90% yeah. of those who have responded, and I'm conscious it's only half of the audience, but, uh, that, that sounds very encouraging that they are good. likely or very likely to, very to apply. And well, it's great to see that again, half of those um, or over, well over half of those who responded found it useful mm. or very useful. Well, actually that, that's wonderful. All of them yeah. found it useful or very useful. Yeah. Um, we would of course absolutely welcome your feedback. Um, you know, we would like to have your feedback whether what you have heard and the setup and the length, you know, just, just whether it's something that you found useful. Um, John, this was our fifth, wasn't it, in the this series? This is our fifth webinar, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, if, if you would like to have a webinar or any of the others, if you would like to have a rerun combination mm -hmm. topics, mm -hmm. uh, we have got the um, questions. So you can see the email address on the screen. Yeah. Any thoughts are very, very welcome. And, and yeah. you know, we, we love talking to you and yeah. anything that might yeah. interest you. Great. And, uh, you know, thank you for thank you all for your continued support to World Chefs, because that's very important for us as well. Um, so, yeah, finally, just want to say that, you know, as Dora's already mentioned, if you would like to watch any of our previous webinars, you can do so by logging on to our World Chefs website, www.worldchefs.org uh, forward slash TV, I believe, is our channel. And you can watch all of our previous webinars. You can also listen to the many podcasts that are uh, being um, broadcast through our um, through Ragnar, uh, Ragnar Fredrickson. Uh, he's the voice of the podcast king. So um, yeah, it's great. And uh, once again, I uh, want to thank Adora for your contribution uh, as always. It's, it's excellent. Great to have you on board. Thank you and for having me. Lynn and Olivia, thank you girls for, uh, again, for the great backup that you have within the World Chef's office team. And uh, I think that's all we want to say. Just everybody wish you all well. Please stay safe. And if you are considering, um, you know, applying for World Chef certification, as we've said, take your time, 
read the handbooks, make the choice and move it on. And so, share your badge if you are successful. Absolutely. Share your share achievement your badge. with the world. Be proud to share your badge. <laughs> Be proud to share your badge right across the world. Yeah. So without, without further ado, we'd just like to say thank you uh, to everyone for listening and we wish you all safe to be safe and well. So take care and bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.